Smithfield's press conference for their bill, Unstoppable. Um, as we have said in the press, uh, when these two gentlemen on the main card, Mr. Colombo versus Mshlongo, get together, the action is going to be unstoppable. And when we were trying to decide what to call this bull, I said to Andre, there can only be one name, it's going to be unstoppable action. So uh, the press conference today, we're going to go obviously introduce all the fighters, uh, go through the card, Mr. Taste will go through the card, and then uh, we will interview and speak to everybody. Um, I'd like to make special mention, there's two, two fighters that are fighting um, outside of this card, we'd just like to wish them well. Alfonso Tissen leaves tonight uh, with his coach, Kurt Chodham, uh, for Malaysia. And um, uh, also Raw Knapp fights in uh, April the 7th in Namibia. So two of uh, Real Steel's fighters fighting abroad. One over the sea, one over the land. Before we uh, get into the questions and answers and uh, introducing the fighters to you on the main card, I'm going to pass the mic over to Mr. Andre Taser. Good day, everybody. Um, yes, unstoppable. We are. I think it's one of the best draw cards we saw in a very long time. We got some of the <coughs> best champions that's fighting on that ball. I think. Mshongo is one of the guys that we have to realize he is unstoppable. He ain't never been stopped. And this is what we're working towards. Um, all respect to the, the, the great boxer that he is. He's one of the older generations and uh, we have to show this guy respect. But I think on the night, um, my friend Colombo is not going to show much respect for him and he wants to put him down and, and stop him. And that's what it's all about. But let's go through the, the fight card on the night that we're going to do and who all is there that you can see some great fights coming up, what we're building, guys that we are building up for greater fights as well. We're starting off with Mitch Stain against Tumi Nakandi, that's a welterweight fight, a four round fight. Um, Mitch Stain lost his first fight so he's coming back from, he's now training by Gerd Stradom as well. So let's see what Gerd brought up in him. Uh, Jabulani Mkinzi, three fights, three wins, three knockouts. Unstoppable, as we said. Um, he's fighting Bison from from Malawi. Malawi has got nine fights, three uh, three win, uh, three fights by stoppage and three losses. So he's been in the game in a long time. He's got 12 fights behind his name. Fighting guy with three fights, so a very good fight coming up. Um, Akani Puzi is fighting. Serge Mukunya. Um, don't know much about Serge. Serge is coming from the Congo, uh, from the DRC, from the DRC. Um, not much that we know about him yet. He, he had fights over there coming this way. Uh, it's, uh, let's see what he, he brings on the night for Akani. Etienne Fanika fighting Vusi Bilankulu. Etienne, five fights, five wins, fighting a, a veteran with 12 fights, 13 fights. So Etienne's a big step up for Etienne, a way forward for him. Let's see what he does on the night. Mark Ferrat, five wins, five, five wins, five fights, five wins. He's fighting Arnu Bota, an ex-cage fighter, a guy that comes from a background of fighting. Um, let's see how the cage fighter can do in the boxing ring this time. Um, it's a guy that uh, showed a lot of promise in the cage, so let's see what he does in the ring. Chris Thompson, I think Chris, there's a lot of talk about you. People mention you in a lot of, of the conversations in the Cruiserweight division. They say there's guys to look forward to. Um, you'll be fighting uh, Moyu on the night. Where's Moyu? Moyu's also here. Moyu, Moyu fought out of Zimbabwe. And uh, yeah, he's bringing it now to South Africa. He's now training out of South Africa as well. I think the thing to mention is Chris is fighting Akani. Uh, on the 28th of April, on Alan to, 22nd of April, on Alan to Wheels tournament for the Gauteng title. So let's see what they do first on the 23rd. We got them both on the court on the 23rd, so let's work on that and then take it to the 28th of, uh, 22nd of April. Um, one of my main supporting guys, Jackson Chalkett versus Cecil Jawani. I think if we go by experience, we're happy that Jackson is there. He's got all the experience in life. If we go by power, we're going by Sisley. 
Um, everybody says to me this fight better go past five rounds because of CC's power. Jackson says bring it on. Which power? <laughs> There's a guy swearing, which power? But his last opponent, he didn't even see the fight that he knocked his last opponent because he was closing his eyes. Jackson will give you the mic just now to talk about that one. Then, of course, guys, we're doing Dennis Mawale that showed a very good, great knockout in his last uh, outing. If you guys seen, if you guys been there, you can see this guy's full of action. He knows what he's doing. He's very composed. He's fighting out of Stephen Castle's stable, the top box. And um, he's, he's very promising at the moment. Um, he's fighting Benin Otia, a seasoned fighter as well with eight fights. So, Dennis, you're going to have to work on the night to get a win behind your name on this one. Then we go to the unstoppable fight. Emmanuel Colombo versus Nkuleku Mashlongu. Mashlongu. Bulldog versus the general. Guys, I don't, I, I don't think I need to talk much about this fight. I think on the night, these two boxes is going to show us what boxing is all about. I think this is a fight that's been called out how long ago? Mshlongu um, is rated number 77 in the world. Uh, general rated number 212 in the world. So one is going for the other one's record. Let's, one wants the other one to have a loss behind his name, other one wants the other one's record. So let's see what happens on the night. But firstly guys, um, get all the spectators out here. This is going to be unstoppable. Thank you guys. All right, there you go. Mr. Said. All right, we went through the ball there. Um, some of the fighters are here, we can ask them obviously to come up just now. We will have questions and answers and we will put some questions to them. But obviously right now we want to focus on the main card. Um, representing both sides of the camps here, we've got obviously Khaled Stradom, everybody knows very well. And we've got Damien Durant. Uh, my first question is obviously going to come to the closest side of the table here, is Mr. Stradom. Mr. Stradom, uh, well the, the rumour is, and you can correct us if not, uh, went to the free state and trained out there for a while and has come back to you recently. Um, has that made a difference in his preparation for this fight or is, is it all systems go and nothing is different? Um, good day everybody. Um, I didn't know that you went to the state. <laughs> free state. <laughs> um, no, that's incorrect. Um, he was never in the free state. He was down in Kuzulu Natal and he's been up here with me a couple of weeks now and um, everything's as usual, blazing on all cylinders and getting ready for next week. The question obviously right now is, um, does he have what it takes to stop the general? Look, um, everybody knows him longer. He's a slow starter and he stops most of his opponents and in the later rounds. He, he gets stronger as the fight goes. And um, let's see what um, the kid's got. If he can take, he'll, he'll hang in there with him longer for a couple of rounds. But um, in this game, you're not getting paid overtime. So we're going to be ready on the night. Tim Schlonger will be ready. He's going to come hard. We're not going to beat around the bush and bullshit people here. Easier to, to win. Um, he's not a youngster anymore. He hasn't got another 10 years left in this game. He knows that. So whatever comes now, he's got to make sure. He knows that he's done the hard work. And come next weekend, he'll fire on all cylinders. Sir, and he'll produce like always. Thank you. Before I give it to you, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, the Bulldog. Uh, the talk out there at the moment on, on social media, in all the boxing gyms is, this fight is split 50-50. People say you, people say your opponent. It's, it's, it, no one really can, it's divided 50-50 all the way. How are you feeling? How is your preparation? And do you have a message for your opponent? Okay, hello, buddy. Uh, preparations are right, um, fit, strong, um, the message that I want to say is uh, to the boxer and to the promoters, I'm not an enemy. I've done changing nappies. I've done looking after kids. 
uh, as uh, my trainer said, I'm old now. I've grown. I've got experience and power, even though we don't see it. But I know I have it. So all I'm saying is that uh, changing nappies is not my job anymore. And I'm not a teacher. I've stopped teaching boxers, boxing. Uh, I've graduated from being a headmaster, a principal. I'm now a boss in this division. So I'll be showing that, that I'm the boss in this division. So I've been tested, as they say, it's got power. I've boxed with boxers who've got power and experience. They've got both power and experience. I don't know much about him uh, in terms of experience. But I know I can take and I can deliver. Thank you very much. Before I go across to the other side of the table, <coughs> my very first question is going to be to Mr. Durant. Um, obviously, again, as I said earlier, the, the talk out is that it's a 50-50 fight. People can't decide. But one of the things that has come up is, that, is this not a step too quickly uh, for the man, the general, Imani? Is it not too soon for him? Um, and has he done enough rounds to even warrant a fight against a, a seasoned champion like Muslambo? Good day, everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, we're looking forward to the 23rd of March. As you know, every dog has its day and it's coming on the 23rd of March. Um, Emmanuel hasn't done many rounds in the pro circle, but he's done many rounds in the gym. I know he's what, he, what he's capable of. Um, Mishlongu comes with experience, but he, he comes with a bit of age on his side. He's been in wars, and he's an old man. I respect him for what he's done in the ring, but it's time to go out with the old and in with the new. Um, I think Colombo's proved himself. There's no one that stands in front of him and takes what he gives. Um, he hasn't had much time to showcase his, his skills, and I think he'll showcase it on the 23rd of March. I don't think Nkun Leku knows what's coming his way. Um, he says he's the boss in the division. He didn't seem to prove it overseas. So we'll see what happens on his own shores. People mustn't forget Colombo came here from the Congo on a bus. He's not here just to warm up. He's, he means business. The man traveled far to be here. He's produced it in eight fights, eight wins, eight knockouts. And the ninth will come on the 23rd of March, old man. All right. Okay, we're we'll moving straight from that. To you, the general himself, Imani, uh, you, you've been waiting for this fight. Uh, you've been you've been calling out, asking for the guys in the top of the division to, to step up and take you. It's happened. How do you feel going into this fight, and what is your prediction on the night? Uh, I just want to thank uh, everyone, and uh, I thank uh, Mr. Andre Cause. Uh, I've been waiting for this fight uh, since last year, and. Now it's happening and I can't wait to be in the ring with, uh, with the printer. And uh, everyone must know is the general uh, uh, is the general I am uh, and I work with the dog. I'm not scared of the dog. Uh, I'll be there. I'll prove what I can do. I will walk him first and in the last I will knock him out. And what I say is what will be done in the 33 of March. Thank you. All right, so uh, I'm going to open up the floor to any questions. Anybody's got any questions um, to ask the, the table? Is anybody out there got any questions? Mugani? You're happy, sir. Ryan, anybody else got any questions for the guys out there? Only just to thank uh, Andre for giving me a chance to revive my career. Uh, Damien, uh, coming to my opponent, uh, I'm not impressed. I watched him on uh, Tiko live. I think uh, Magasello was analyzing the fight when he was fighting uh, Pilani, and he knocked him out. And uh, the boy went to hospital, I heard stories, they said he's got power, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm not impressed. If, I, if he was here, I was going to ask him if 
the punch that he knocked Pilani out with, does he still remember it? Because by the look of it, it was not from the book of boxing. From, he even jumped. So I've watched him on YouTube. I've seen so many mistakes. I, I think he's clumsy. He doesn't know shit about boxing. So come the 23rd. And I just wanted to point out this. The level of boxing in this country has gone down. I think last week I was in amateurs. Only for uh, what you call a uh, championship fight in an amateur in uh, uh, what you call the uh, regional championships. So if you see uh, the amateur level going down like that, the breathing ground of professional going down like that, what is the amateur producing for the next generations of professional? They produce shit like Sikhe uh, Jelwani, who they think he, he is, but to me he's, he's nothing. I've seen, I've seen best. I would like, I'd love to fight maybe one boy from uh, Eastern Cape. Uh, or uh, Voi. I think the two are better than him. I think the number that he's been rated in is he doesn't deserve to be there. You know. Uh, thank you. That's that's all I can say. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's go guys.